Episode 110, Meet Soup Time. At the sight of the new snakeskin in the bedroom, Roger realized that Stephen had shed his skin, not consumed a transparent crystal as he had assumed. Seeing this snakeskin reminded Roger of the scene where Blair was captured, hence he pulled a long face at Stephen. After arranging his nest, he said to Blair, Blair, sleep with me today. Sure, Blair replied after a moment's hesitation. Although today was the big day for Stephen because of the shedding, Roger had been slogging for the day. If she didn't show some bias towards him, he would surely feel highly aggrieved. Moreover, since Stephen couldn't be exposed to the sun, Roger would have to be the one tending to the rice fields. Hence, Blair wanted to make it up to Roger a little. Roger revealed a broad grin. Lifting Blair into his arms, he placed her in the center of the nest. Stephen merely lowered his eyes and walked to his nest all by himself. He picked up his snakeskin and started to tailor clothes. By now, he knew Blair's body so well that there wasn't a need to take measurements anymore. In any case, he didn't wish to sleep, so he decided he'd just let the leopard be with Blair tonight. Blair's skin still felt hot and prickly. The minute she closed her eyes, all she could feel was that uncomfortable sensation. No matter how she tried, she couldn't get to sleep. Hence, she crawled to the edge of the nest to watch Stephen make clothes. Can you make other designs? I want to wear something looser. Something with two straps on the shoulders so that it won't slip off. Blair gestured to her shoulders, then above her knees. Make it this long. I'll just have to put on this one piece before going out. Can you do that? Stephen smiled indulgently at her. Of course. Thank you, Blair said cheerfully. She laid on her stomach on the grass nest and watched as Stephen skillfully sewed the dress for her. Roger also turned to the same side, transformed into a leopard beside Blair, and slept with his face down. The next day, Blair put on the new clothing. The white dress had a simple design, and the slim shoulder straps made Blair's shoulders and arms appear particularly slim and delicate. The large scales on the dress's fabric looked like exquisite dark floral prints. Under the hem of that dress was a pair of knees that didn't have an ounce of flab, slim and delicate calves, and even her petite feet exuded an exquisiteness. As Stephen gazed at her, the satisfaction he felt in his heart was inexplicable. Do you like it? Yes! Blair nodded her head hard, her eyes filled with delight. Although there wasn't a full-length mirror, Blair could still feel Stephen's extraordinary skill. This dress was slightly tighter on top so that when she bent over, she wouldn't expose herself. The waist was also deliberately tightened, showing the beautiful curves of her waist. The skirt of the dress was very loose and felt very comfortable. Other than the tightened part at the waist that had been trimmed, The other parts were in one piece. It was evident that Stephen had spent quite some effort on the design. If this dress was sold in a boutique, shoppers would certainly go crazy over it. Blair spun one round to admire herself, causing the dress to flare up and bringing about a breeze to her body. This made Blair, who hadn't worn a dress for a long time, think that she had exposed herself. She hurriedly held down her dress and smiled embarrassedly. Oh, no! Of course, Blair did wear her undergarment and sighed. It was hard for a person to change her clothing habits after more than a decade. The task of the day was to grind wheat into flour. Stephen joined in as well. Using his snake tail to coil around the handle of the grinding stone... He turned the grinding stone at an appropriate speed. Roger was in charge of cleaning the wheat and feeding it into the grinding stone, and from time to time he would pour in some clear water. People in her world certainly wouldn't make flour using such a brutal and simplistic method, much less add water into the wheat. Instead, in the modern days, flour was made in a dry state. But 
this was the best they could manage in the beast man's world. Unlike rice pulp, unfiltered pulp made from wheat bran was of a slightly dark color. However, their textures were similarly smooth. People in the modern ages called this whole wheat flour. After the pulp was let to settle for half an hour, the clear water on the surface was poured away. By then, the remaining pulp was already rather thick, and it could simply be laid out on a large rock to dry under the sun. It had been blazing hot these few days. After being exposed to the scorching sun for one day, the pulp was basically dry now and had solidified into pieces. Just apply a little pressure and they would be crushed into powder. The backyard of the tiger castle was strewn with rocks and the wheat pulp was laid over them to be exposed under the sun. Five days later, two-thirds of the wheat was transformed into a light brown colored flour and the remaining one-third was left as seeds. Six bags of wheat reduced to merely four bags after they were ground into powder. Looking at the large bags of flour at home, the corners of Blair's lips curled up into a sneer laced with hatred. It's time to deal the ape king a blow. This proves that even the carnivorous females can accept starchy foods. Blair didn't think that wheat was much different from rice. In fact, wheat was much more versatile, and its flavor was also richer. Compared to rice, wheat was more suited for the beastman world, which didn't have as much variety in food. Furthermore, wheat was much easier to grow than rice. If the females could accept flour, Rex's prestige would definitely be enhanced. Rex, go and call the females in the city of Beastmen over. Okay. Without questioning this at all, Rex strode out. Shortly after, the deafening deep growl of a tiger was heard from outside the door. Blair dabbed some flour onto her fingertip, and with a flick of her index finger, the powder swirled in the air. Roger, can you help me start a fire? Blair turned around and said to Roger with a smile, Start it in the main hall and boil the big pot. I'm going to make a pot of meat soup for the females. Roger's heart skipped a beat at Blair's smile. Without even thinking about it, he agreed. Okay. Only after running into the woodshed did it occur to him that Blair just said she was going to distribute her food to the females in the village but it was too late for regret. In the backyard, Stephen came back with a clean grinding stone. Blair said, many people are going to come later. You should go upstairs. Standing next to the grinding stone, Stephen said, I'm worried about you. I'll just stay in the backyard. Knowing that Stephen was traumatized from the assassination attempt on her previously, she nodded. Actually, now that she thought of it, she too felt lingering fears. Then help me kill a short-winged bird. Okay. The citizens of the City of Beastmen had a lot of respect for the Beast Kings. Especially since Rex had just contributed a great deal for everyone, they particularly held him in high regard. Shortly after, several females entered the Tiger Castle. Blair did the cooking personally this time for she knew that Roger wouldn't willingly cook for other people. When the fire became hot enough, she drizzled some oil into the stone pot. The instant the oil landed on the pot, smoke started coming from it. She hurriedly added ginger, garlic, pepper, and other condiments into the pot. As the contents of the pot crackled, a strong smell that stimulated the senses entered the air. Those females who arrived first felt a little frightened when they heard those explosions and went to hide far away. One of the females yelled at Blair, What are you doing? Get away from there! Blair turned her head and smiled at them, before stir-frying the condiments and pouring in clear water. After another series of sizzling sounds, the pot resumed its calm. While the water temperature wasn't too high, Blair added some shredded meat from about 150 grams to 200 grams of the short-winged bird into the pot. If the meat was placed into the water while it was still cool, 
the texture of the meat would turn out more tender, and the juice of the meat would also permeate more easily into the soup, making the soup tastier. This was what Roger learned over this past one year of cooking soup. Blair closed the pot lid, then looked towards the females. I discovered that when the wild grains are ground to a powder before cooking, they turn out delicious. Hence, I invited all of you here to try it. The females were evidently disappointed. The female who spoke up earlier said, but I don't like wild grains, and I would at most eat the cooked grains and never drink the water, because the water is black and murky and tastes like medicine. You smashed the grains and cooked it with water. I'll bet it tastes awful. With a purse-lipped smile, Blair raised the batter that she set aside and showed it to the females. The dough didn't have to be very dry. A little flour was enough to make a basin full. When the stone basin was tipped, the pulp would flow slowly, but wouldn't turn into a sloppy goo. It's white, not black, Blair said. This aroused the females' interest. Seeing that the pot didn't explode, they got bolder and walked over, peering curiously into the matter inside. Their males hurriedly followed behind them. My goodness! How did it become one piece? Which male crushed it? He must have enormous strength. Are these really wild grains? Unable to cope with the questions everyone was bombarding her with, Blair simply said, You'll need a bowl to contain the soup later. The males should go and get the bowls first. After Blair finished speaking, the females urged their spouses to return home. Of course, the males obediently obliged. The beast men didn't have bowls that were especially used for eating, but every household had a stone mortar used for crushing medicine. The shape of those stone mortars was similar to that of a bowl. The females arrived one after the other. All the females now understood what was going on. Once the water in the pot boiled, Blair started shoveling the noodles inside the pot using a piece of bamboo. The crescent-shaped noodles were brought to the surface, and as the temperature rose, the aroma of the meat wafted through the main hall. As starch was added, the smell became more intense and rich. The females unanimously narrowed their eyes to savor the fragrance in the air. It smells so nice. No idea who spoke, but they suddenly snapped out of their trance and stared at the stone pot with a glow in their eyes. Don't be anxious, they'll be ready soon, Blair said with a smile. With her heart very much put to ease now, she winked at Rex standing by the side. Rex strode out and said in his deep voice, Line up over here. Everyone gets one bowl. Although the females were afraid of Rex, they felt much bolder with so many of them around. They instantly got in line with their bowls in hand, leaving their forgotten spouses by the side. Rex, who had never been treated like a regular male by the females before, felt like he had changed into a new shell upon seeing them walk over normally. It felt surreal to him. The soup was ready in no time. Although Blair had cooked a full pot, it still wasn't enough for everyone. She loaded their bowls with two ladles full, which was about the amount in a porcelain bowl in her world, but only managed to cover the bottom of the rice cooker-sized stone mortar. As the stone mortar was big, when the soup was poured in, it would decrease in temperature due to the cold mortar. Hence, the females started slurping it down without further ado. Blair couldn't help stopping what she was doing and looking towards those females who were drinking soup. After a while, finally, a female set down her stone mortar and said in a delighted voice, It's so yummy! Following that, several other females finished their soups and echoed the same sentiments. It's soft and so much more delicious than rice. Yummy. The soup is tasty too. I've never tasted anything so delicious before. Awesome. Blair smiled and under the urging of the female standing before her, continued distributing the noodle soup.